نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم. بنتبه ان شاء الله تعالى with book of منهاج او منهج السالكين الناتج الفقه بين الامام السعدي رحمه الله تعالى And we had finished uh, last time uh, Kitab al uh, the book of fasting. And the book after that is Kitab al hajj So inshallah ta'ala, we'll start tonight with Kitab al hajj but it has nothing to do with tomorrow's lecture. Tomorrow will be more, inshallah ta'ala, practicality is more than uh, reading from a specific book. So we'll start inshallah ta'ala with Kitab al hajj And uh, the chapter of al hajj in this book Sheikh Rahimah Allah Ta'ala he makes the mat or the wordings of the book from the famous hadith of Jabir radiallahu an which is the most famous hadith in matters of Hajj describing the Hajj of the Prophet this hadith is in Bukhari and others in which Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu an described the Hajj of the Prophet ﷺ from the beginning to the end. And within that, of course, there is the rulings and the different types of uh, rulings and so on. And as uh, when we read in books of Fiqh, when we see in matters of Fiqh, you would find the ulama making it easy for the people. This is more of uh, a knowledge with its principles and foundation and conditions and so on. So they would classify the, the actions of the Prophet ﷺ or his speech or what's in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to matters of fiqh, matters of ibadah or transaction based on pillars and conditions and recommended acts and makruh acts, disliked and what's haram uh, the ahkam al-khamsa, the five rulings in which all of the affairs of the people are governed by these five rulings either they are doing obligation or the opposite of that is haram or mustahab, what is recommended, or the opposite of that is the makroh or the disliked, or they're doing something mubah. So it's a way to make it easy for someone to study, and also at the same time to know if a person misses something. If he misses an obligation, he has to make it up, or it's only something recommended. If he misses it, there's no sin, or what is the way? That's why matters of fiqh, it's very important to know the way, uh, and it's divided into these types of masail, based again on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet So he will take the hadith of Jabir عنه, as masail, as matters of uh, fiqh issues and matters of hajj. So he said, and we talked about that before when they say al-asl or the origin, it's literally translated uh, in matters of fiqh, meaning that this is the basic ruling of it, this is the, the evidence. In this context means the evidence uh, with regards to the obligation of Hajj, Qawlu Ta'ala, wa lillahi ala nasi hajju al-bayti min istata'i lahi sabila, Surah Ali Imran, verse number 97, where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala uh, uh, making it uh, incumbent upon the people. And the uh, verse starts, wa lillahi ala nasi. And to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, onto on the people, Hajju al-bayt, to go to the bayt, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca. And it shows that this is a very high obligation because it starts with walillah. It means this is one of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto the believers. And a nas here, people, right? It doesn't mean all people, believers and disbelievers and everyone. Like uh, some people said that, not people of knowledge, but some people of ignorance, they said the ayah says walillahi ala nas that it's on all people. So everybody should go to Mecca and make hajj. Muslims and non-Muslims and whoever has the means, he should go. People said that, people of ignorance of course. Why? Because they don't understand what the context of the verses means. Uh, yes, it's, it's mandatory on all people, but after being Muslim. So uh, the people should embrace the deen of Islam and then uh, one of the pillars of Islam is to make hajj. And also the meaning of it uh, because the word al nas can be different from one context to the other. In this context, it, it refers to the believers only. Right? So it's very important to understand the meaning of the words 
and to understand the context of, of where these words are in the sentence. So this is one of the pillars of Islam as we know. And then he says, وَالْإِسْتِطَاعَةُ أَعْضَرُ سُرُوزِ Which means an istita' to be able to do it, to have the means to fulfill this pillar, is one of the most important conditions of Hajj. Hajj, since it's a pillar of Islam, it's mandatory on every Muslim. But there's a condition to it. The person is capable because it needs physical ability for the person to uh, reach his destination to Mecca and come back. It needs uh, some financial responsibilities for a person to go and to come back and to leave something for his family. So not everybody has this capability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created people with different means. So uh, this is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not mandatory for every single person. It's only for those who are capable of doing so. And uh, the ulama talked about what is al what is the capability then? This is what we will be mentioned in some of that. So this is one of the most important conditions for Hajj. Uh, and then he says, what is al to be able is? To have the uh, ownership or the means or the ability to uh, as that is the provisions for the whole trip going and coming and to leave provisions for his family. What rahila is the transportation, is the thing that would take uh, After the necessities of the human being, the original necessities for a human being, uh, food and, and drink and, and, and life itself with, the, with all its necessities. And this mas'ala or this issue of al istitaah the ulama they talked about it, uh, is it mandatory immediately on the person becomes mandatory for him to go for hajj if he has these means or ala tarakhi means he has the spaciousness meaning if someone has the money to go for hajj this year right and it's still for example not late for him to apply for hajj he had never made hajj before and he had fulfilled the conditions he reached the age of puberty and so on so if a person has the means financially to go for Hajj and physically he has the ability to go for Hajj so he has the Zad and the Rahil he can sit in an airplane he can, you know, he, he doesn't have to have some special treatment or whatever he, ha he can go back and forth and he has the financial capability does it make it mandatory for that person to go for Hajj this year and it becomes haram for him because it's mandatory to delay it for later years this is an issue that has differences of opinions. And without going into the details, right, uh, the correct opinion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that it's mandatory. If a person has the need to go for hajj and he never went to hajj, it is not permissible for him to delay it. Unless there's a necessity, then it's something else. He can go, he can go. That means he's not able to go. But if he has the ability, right, so this is where the condition is. If he fulfilled that condition, he has the ability physically, financially, all the means are made easy, right? Then he has to go for Hajj. And if he doesn't, that person is subjecting himself to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Umar anhu has a very strong statement with regards to Hajj. That someone has the means, doesn't go for Hajj, he said, what then uh, he let him die as a Jew or Christian? Because the ayah of Allah al nasi Hajj al Bayt and Sata Alayhi Sabila. Whoever disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is the most rich. It is not meat of your ibadah. In the same context that it's mentioned. It doesn't mean that a person becomes a kafir. No, but see the strong statement. That means this can lead the person to die in the seal of kufr. If he has the means and he doesn't go for hajj, this can lead. As all sins can lead the person step by step closer and closer to the worst thing and there is the this belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so especially for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon, especially those who are living in matters of ease. Uh, for example, in this country, people need to be educated about it. And it's not like, okay, he's, he's planning after 10 years or after 5 years or after this or that. This is a mandatory thing. Once in life time, as it's mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallam, by the mercy of Allah. So it doesn't matter that some people they have in some cultures, you have to be very old to go for Hajj. There's no such a thing. A person has uh, reached the age of puberty, 16 years old, and he has wealth, he has the means. Maybe they, they won't allow him to travel unless he takes permission. 18 years old, right? 
and he has the means to go back and forth and so on, it is mandatory for him. Uh, somebody would say, well, he wants to get married. If he gets married before Hajj and he does not have money, it's not mandatory for him. When time for Hajj comes, he has the money to, to go for Hajj, then he should go, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for the person. So this is one issue in this matters of uh, Hajj, or one of the, masail, the important issues in Hajj. يقول ومن الاستطاعة أن يكون المرأة محرم إذا احتاج لسفر which means that from الاستطاعة from the means of capability or means of being able to make حج is that the woman she has a محرم and this محرم would need also to travel and he has to have the means to go so it's not one person it's two people although what is mandatory is if it's for for the woman right it's mandatory for her but she cannot travel without a mahram. So if she has the money for herself, if she has the physical ability to go for herself, that's not enough for her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it even easier for her. Right? Uh, why? Because in that case, she is not someone that is committing a sin. If she doesn't go, if she doesn't have a mahram. The mahram has to go with her. Does he have to uh, have the financial ability? If he doesn't, there's no harm. If he has and he doesn't give her, he has no sin on him. It's on her, right? Uh, and this is come brings another issue. Is it mandatory for the husband to take his wife for hajj? He better, of course. Otherwise, you know, uh, uh, for, yeah, he'll be in trouble. <laughs> so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him. But as far as the rulings, halal and haram, mandatory, it's not mandatory for him. It's uh, an individual responsibility. That's why women in Islam, they have their independent financial responsibilities. So if she doesn't have the means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for her. The husband is not committing sins if he uh, does not take him for hajj. But of course, definitely, this is a concern that always a Muslim have. Once he reaches the age of puberty, how would he or she fulfill this pillar of Allah? So Mr. the woman, she has to have a wife. So if the wife doesn't have the capability and if the husband has it, so he should go even without her? No. Nah. Very good. If Very good uh, point here. If a husband and a wife, the husband has the means to go alone uh, this year. And uh, maybe if you wait next year, right, he can take his wife with him. So they say, the wife will tell him, then wait. Next year, maybe I won't have a chance. So if you go this year, so don't go for Hajj this year, and so that both of us will go next year. No, he should go alone. He is independently responsible for his Hajj to be fulfilled. Again, this is if it's his first hajj. If his mother and father, right, but they don't need him necessarily to help him or anything like that, and they say, let us go for hajj and not you, no, it's his responsibility first to go for hajj. He has the money, right, and the most people that have rights on the person in his life, you know, is, uh, those who are alive, the mother and the father and so on. So if the mother will tell him, give me the money that you have for me to go for hajj, and she didn't make hajj. And he does not have, and he has the money to go for hajj, and he never made hajj. No, it's mandatory for him to go first, without making his mother upset. How can he do that? He has to figure that out. Right? But if he, you know, he has money and he gives it to his, uh, his mother, and she uses it for hajj, there's no harm. So this is with regards to al-istida'ah, and then he starts with the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu. Qulu hadithu Jabir fi hajj al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yashtamilu, على أعظم أحكام الحج. This hadith has the most important and the most virtuous benefits whatsoever. That it's very important for those, especially those who go for Hajj, to study this hadith. It's a long hadith. Talks about the Hajj of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. وهو ما رواه مسلم عن جابر بن عبد الله. This is what Muslim, the Muslim رحمه الله reported this from Jabir رضي الله عنه. The first point أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مكث في المدينة تسع سنين لم يحج. Prophet stayed in Al Medina for nine years and he didn't make Hajj. And this is one of the evidence of the other group, those who say Hajj is not mandatory immediately, because the Prophet stayed in Medina for nine years and he didn't make Hajj. Right? But the other side would say this is, was a time of the Sharia. This is the, the, the rulings are being established and the Wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. Thumma adhana fil nasi fil Then he called for the people in the 10th year of, of after Hijrah, uh, it was 
proclaimed among the people that the Prophet ﷺ is going out for Hajj, meaning the tenth year of uh, Hijrah. فَقَدِمَ الْمَدِينَةَ بَشَرٌ كَثِيرٌ Many people came to al Medina and that year, كُلُّهُمْ يَلْتَمِسُوا أَنْ يَأْتَمَّ النَّاسُ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَيَعْمَلُوا مِثْلَهِ All of them, they are seeking to uh, follow the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and to do the actions like him and to follow him in Hajj and what is the better honor than this? When people get to know that the Prophet is going for Hajj, people came to Medina in numbers. And this was the only Hajj for the Prophet and this is Hajj al Wada. This is the farewell Hajj and in it is the, the khutbah and Arafah and so on that we have heard before. Then he says, We went out with the Prophet حتى إذا أتينا ذا الحليفة till when, you, when we reached ذا الحليفة uh, which is outside of the Medina فولدت أسماء بنت عميس محمد بن أبي بكر أسماء بنت عميس رضي الله عنها she gave birth to Muhammad بن أبي بكر right and you can imagine uh, those who are going with the Prophet وسلم, even a woman that is about to give birth and she goes with the Prophet وسلم, she gave birth right outside of the Medina فأرسلت إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف أصنع؟ She sent to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام asking him كيف أصنع؟ What do I do in her situation because she has the afterbirth bleeding which is going to take uh, you know weeks and she's going for Hajj and then what is the ruling in this؟ قال ابتسلي واستنفري بثوب وأحرمي واستنفري بثوب وأحرمي he said عليه الصلاة والسلام take a shower and وَاسْتَفِيرِ بِثَوْبٍ which means wrap yourself so that the blood does not affect your clothes or uh, things like that and make ihram which whatever means that the woman would uh, wrap herself with to protect herself from the blood because the blood of الحيض or النفاس it's an impure blood so uh, to wrap herself good so that the blood is not affecting her body or her clothes and to make ihram so he ordered to, to make wus and to wrap herself good so that the blood does not affect her and to make ihram as we would see that uh, for women in hajj they can be in state of ihram when they have their menses or after birth bleeding they can do all the things that a person go for hajj do except one thing and that is the tawaf of course, no salah, which is known, and no fasting, uh, and this is okay. And also in Hajj, in regards to rituals of Hajj, she do everything. Haram and all the different things in Hajj, and even suffer to make tawaf, although the tawaf, the tawaf is not to be done, unless it's a very dire need, which is not the subject now. So the only thing is that she doesn't do is the tawaf. Everything else she does, and she goes from one place to the other in Hajj, like everybody do, and uh, except the Tawaf. Uh, and in that case, now we're getting into some details, um, might be different from the subject, with regards to the woman and her menses. If she got her menses on the way to Hajj, right, and she had made the haram for Umrah, like most people would do, and uh, she goes to Mecca, and her menses will stay for, for days and there's the Hajj right after it. She's not going early. She's going right before the 8th of the Hajj, by one day maybe. So she, get, she goes on the 7th of the Hajj and the Manasik starts the 8th. And she knows that her menses will stay for 6-7 days. And she went and she made a Haram for Umrah. So what she do then? In that case she can change, change her Haram, her intentions to make her Hajj in this case uh, Hajj Qadr so she would have the Umrah and the Hajj together with one intention instead of making Umrah and then relieving herself after the Umrah and then making the Haram again for Hajj because she can't finish the Umrah now so it becomes mandatory for her now that she makes it only one intention Hajj Qadr and in that case when she goes to Mecca she doesn't have to make the Tawaf because she is in her menses and she would delay that to make it the Tawaf of Al-Ifawdah, uh, which is the tawaf of Al-Hajj, will be for both Hajj and Umrah together. So she will go to Mecca and stay in Mecca till uh, in her in her ihram. She won't break her ihram 
till the eighth, and then she goes to make Hajj and everything. And whenever she makes the tawaf, it will be considered for both the Hajj and Umrah since they are together. Uh, but with with this, inshallah, with the different situations, we can do that later, inshallah. Uh, I don't want to keep you long because it's late. One more issue here, one more sentence in the hadith. He uh, says, فَصَلَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam made the salah in the masjid. Uh, and the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he prayed the fard, it was said, ظُهْرُ الصَلَى in the Khulayfa, outside of Mecca, in this field of Wadi Al-Aqib, uh, it was a Fardu Salah. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ made the Fardu Salah, ثُمَّ رَكَبَ الْقَصْوَةِ And then he uh, was uh, Rakiba, mean that he right over his Naqa, or his camel, uh, and it's called al qaswa and this is was said the one that he made Hijr on, والسلام, the same camel that he made Hijr on, والسلام, till uh, his naqa, his camel, uh, was right on the on the on al bayda is the Sahara is the desert. Ahalla bil Tawheed. Prophet Sallam made the lihlal uh, is to initiate something. And in, in this regard, with regards to the Talbiyah of Al-Hajj. It is not intentions, it's the Talbiyah of Al-Hajj or Ihlal of Al-Hajj to be in the state of Al-Ihram by saying Labbayka, Labbayka Allahumma Labbayka, Labbayka La Sharika Laka Labbayk, in Alhamdulillah Al-Hamdan Al-Ni'ma Talaka Wal-Mulk, La Sharika Laka. So it shows here that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he prayed the Fard al-Salah, did make the intentions for Hajj yet, or did make the Talbiyah yet, and then after he got into his naqa, on his cabin, then he made the talbiyah. In that case, a person would either make ihlal with umrah, uh, or with umrah al-hajj, or with hajj al the different, with the three types of uh, hajj, hajj ifrad, or hajj ifrad, or hajj tamattum. And of course, when the times of ease, when a person has the means, definitely, Hajj al-Tamattu' is what should be done. Even some of the Arma, they made it mandatory for people to make Tamattu' although the matter is easy, but again, if a person has the means, that what should be done, and that is a person who would make the intentions of Umrah. So in that case, when he first goes, he would say, Labbayk Allahumma, Umrah, right? Uh, and then starts the Talbiyah. Labbayk Allahumma, Labbayk. And of course, the meanings of the Talbiyah is really something that many people, when they talk about Hajj, and when we do Hajj, the most of the concern is about the physical means to be done. Uh, the rulings that I do my hajj proper to, to make sure that the hajj is done right, physically. But uh, what many ignore is the meanings behind this. And the benefits of every word to be said. And uh, the, the fulfillment of the hajj in the most perfect way. With every word is being said, this is such a great meaning in which a person will understand that, uh, what is behind all of this. The, the means of al-ihram, the state of al-ihram is not just a piece of cloth that a person wears, it's something that has to, ha to affect the heart. A person leaving everything and wearing just two sheets, uh, going for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding him of the journey of the hereafter, reminding him of the reality of this life. That uh, the hajj can really show the person his journey in this life from the beginning to the final destination. And when a person says labbayk, Allahumma labbayk, what's labbayk means? And when somebody calls you, right, it's, it's from the sunnah. If anyone calls you, uh, and when, when I say it's from the sunnah, because it's uh, something used to be said or done then from the adab, from the manners, is to say labbayk. So someone calls you, oh, Muhammad, Ahmed. See, you tell him labbayk, right? This is from the manners, which means here I am. And you would uh, face him totally, not just, uh, you know, with your back towards your brother, no. As if now he is calling you and you are under his, you for his service, right? So the, the believers they say this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wake Allah wa wake. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them for hajj. So it's an honor for someone to respond to the call and it's tawfiq and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for someone to be chosen to be among those who would go for such a trip and for them to say, here we are accepting the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud of his, uh, the believers 
and the hadith in the day of Arafah in front of the angels and so on, in which all of them are forgiven. And this is where the trip of Hajj is one of the means to forgive major sins and all sins before, uh, as the Prophet said. But we'll stop, inshallah ta'ala, at this point. And with this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll, uh, we'll continue next week. But tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll also use the same hadith. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us, inshallah ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.